alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Modern and Modest on ITV. I am your host, Noshina Ghani. Alhamdulillah, it's just been a few days now that we've uh, all celebrated Eid, beautiful occasion, joyous occasion, and I guess now it's just getting back to the usual that we uh, busy ourselves with out of Ramadan. But based in Durban, we have to discuss what's been relative and what we've just experienced just over a week ago, which was the Comrades Marathon. Now, the Comrades, as we all know, is something huge. It's amazing. It's beautiful, inspirational. And in studio today, we're going to be chatting to three dynamic guests, one being a, a GP that specializes in sports science, sports medicine, and two guests that have uh, ran the Comrades more than once. Um, so when we're back, we're going to be introducing you to three dynamic guests, and hopefully we could take some inspiration from there. Welcome back to studio and the awaited guest, uh, very inspirational, very dynamic. I will be introducing you now to Dr. D.G. Govender, practicing in Amshlanga, a general practitioner specializing in sports science as well as travel medicine. But great to have him in studio today because he would be able to share tips on pre-comrades, the day, race day as well as post-comrades in, uh, injuries. So let us introduce you to Dr. D.G. Govinder. Hi. Welcome, Dr. Govinder, to Modern and Modest. Uh, thank you so much for making the time out to us today and allowing us the opportunity to be chatting to someone as experienced as yourself. So, Dr. Govinder, could you perhaps just tell us a little bit more about yourself and your story to comrades and why sports science? Hi, Nashina and the guests. Okay. Uh, viewers, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, uh, passionate about sport all my life from school days, and uh, after soccer, cricket, tennis, what comes next? Road running, and once you start that, the ultimate human race, comrades. So I started running uh, late in life, in my 30s, 35, I think, and from there, we started a club in Tongat, Tongat Panthers Athletic Club, and the how the passion grew. I attempted uh, 12 comrades, unfortunately, poor hit rate, finished six only, six medals, bronze, very slow runner, and failed in the others, of course. I suppose uh, <laughs> the fact that you uh, got into travel, even if you just accomplish one, it's, it's something very full. Yes, yeah. very painful uh, okay. <laughs> achievement, I must say. Okay. Yeah, but uh, you know, the camaraderie, comrades, got such a rich history in this country. Yeah. I think it's to us to commemorate, commemorate the uh, uh, war veterans, Second World War, or the first, I'm not quite sure. Mm -hmm. And yeah, with the Bruce Fordyces and the rest of them uh, uh, stimulating over the years, so one has to run it. If you're a runner, in Durban especially, you have to run comrades, I suppose. Okay. So, uh, Dr. Govinder, you are a general practitioner. You specialize in sports science, travel, and what else do you offer? Uh, I do aviation medicine. I do pilot medicals. I do dive medical for commercial divers. Okay. And I do business executive medicals. Uh, yeah, so... I'm interested Pretty in much a few things. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so comrades and running is obviously your passion because you've participated in 12. Yes. So, um, Dr. Govinder, we know that it's been just over a week now that the comrades, uh, you know, Durban's had the comrades on Sunday the 10th. Um, but for those of us that are looking to perhaps want to run the comrades next year, what advice could you give runners? Um, do you have to be... Uh, a fantastic athletic to get into running. Uh, what is the prep? How long should you be training for? Right. Now that's that's a bit of a toughy question. Okay? okay. I think it all depend on 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 your general fitness okay. initially. Obviously, a six-year-old with cardiac problems will think twice. Mm -hmm. So I would suggest if you have a, a basic uh, physical fitness, you know, okay. a bit sporty, you could play more sport. You can walk five, ten k without a problem. And you started jogging and you mm -hmm. do the park, park runs now that's so popular all over the country. Yes. In Durban, as you know, we have the Sun Coast park runs every Saturday mornings. Okay. And so in Amshlanga, in the promenade, beautiful, wonderful, it's a family thing. And from there, people now get inspired to go the next, the next step. From the 5K walk, 5K run, then the 10K, and then they start seeing comrades mm. and uh, want to go further. Mm -hmm. So my suggestion to the novice runner, 
first get checked out, even if you're 20 years old or 50 years old, first get checked out, we medically fit. Go yes, to your yes. GP, mm -hmm. basic blood pressure, blood sugar, check if you're diabetic, if you have any cardiac murmurs or any underlying condition that you may not be aware mm -hmm. of, mm -hmm. and then sort that out and your doctor will obviously mm -hmm. advise you whether you should continue. Okay. And if he's not quite sure, send them to me. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I suppose when you are um, entering for any race, you have to have certain medical checks in place uh, just so that we know that you're fit and able to yeah, run the race. Yeah, that's what I just said. Yeah. Then I would, I would say now the novice runner, join a club. Okay. okay. If you run anything beyond 10 Ks, mm -hmm. you, you need a, a running license to run on public roads. Okay. So you do that by joining a club in your area, preferably. Okay. So you get people to train with. It becomes a, a social thing, okay. getting up on Sunday mornings uh, early for the long runs mm -hmm. and so forth. So you start slow, obviously. At the beginning, you might be doing 5Ks twice or thrice a week, walks. Then you graduate. And slow, you build it yes, from uh, there. yeah, yeah, a okay. slow program, to, and you upgrade to the longer distances. And always get advice from okay. uh, an expert. In, in most clubs, there are a lot of experienced runners. Like one of our runners was coming on the panel just now, okay. and 15 comrades, I think. Right. So these guys know a lot, and okay. they can advise you. There's common sense advice. Okay. And of course, there are sports physicians, there's physiotherapists who are, who are very keen on sports medicine in this mm -hmm. country now. So there's a lot of knowledgeable people out there. And even okay. your sports shops have got experts okay. who can advise you on, on shoe wear. Uh, right. I, must, I must say that a lot of runners, novice runners, usually start off running with the wrong shoe. Okay. They buy cross okay. trainers because they're cheap. You'll never get a good running uh, a pair of shoes that's anything less than 1,000 rand. Unfortunately, it's, a, it's an expensive game. Okay. So always get advice on shoes because that's your main equipment. You can have an okay. old vest or or old shorts, who cares? Okay. But those running shoes are the most important, important. part of for the so, so basically, mm. before a race, you've got to ensure your medical checkup. You've got to... Um, join a running club and definitely invest in a good pair of shoes. Yes. So, um, Dr. Govinda, on race day itself, uh, coming to nutrition, what should an individual be uh, perhaps having the night before? Um, should you be having something to eat or drink on the morning of the race? And uh, also hydration. I know there's a lot yeah. happening with regards to over-hydration. Yeah, yeah. So it's very important to, to, to do what you do during your training sessions. Okay. Nothing new on Comrades Day or Comrades <laughs> Evening. Mm -hmm. So this all comes with experience again. But now you've been running, I don't think you can do Comrades without a year's training for a novice. Okay. The experienced runners can do six months of training and get away with it. But for a novice runner who hasn't ran more than 10, 15 Ks before, we to gradually graduate to, to 90 Ks, okay. like a year, even two years, I would say. Right. So in that, during that time when his training runs, you should learn how to, to eat and drink according to his body requirements, right? There's a lot of information out there on carbo loading, yes. on, on, yeah, on, on the protein shakes and this and that. So mm -hmm. all that comes down to experience, talking to other runners, talking to your sports nutritionists. There are a lot of dietitians out there. Mm -hmm. And once again, fellow runners will guide you on how to eat and drink. On the, well, as I said, all comes to your personal experience. So there's no fixed thing. But normally we know the night, uh, three nights, three days before the big race, guys are carbo loading. So they're yes, increasing yes. the carbohydrate intake and, and cutting down probably on the protein and fats. Okay. So there's a lot of uh, controversy about all this, the ways of uh, uh, carbo loading and, and, and things and over the years. Okay. And obviously, uh, hydration also, especially on the race day. We used to say you should drink roughly about half a liter per hour, okay. always depending on body size now, mm -hmm. the, the bigger person drink more. That's roughly about 200 mils every 15 minutes. And you know on the Comrades route, we have uh, watering st hydration stations roughly every uh, 2.5 to 3 Ks. Okay. So you get lots of hydration stations and that's the problem. Runners tend to over drink. I was just going to say, uh, you know, we, we all think of hydration being key. But what is your take and the risk of overhydration? Actually, overhydration is worse than dehydration. I so. I mean, there was right? Just a, yeah. A yeah. Recent uh, episode with uh, what's just happened yes. the last Sunday. Yes. Yes. People over drink too much, and uh, and you can drop your sodium levels in your bloodstream, and that okay. can actually get you unconscious. So it's it's a serious problem. So an unconscious runner on the road doesn't mean he's, uh, he's, he's dehydrated. Okay. So the doctors know what to do, the paramedics know what to do, how to treat them. But for the runner, please remember, drink as you feel. If okay. you're thirsty, drink. 
don't take two, 300 mils every 15 minutes, then you're definitely going to overhydrate okay. and you're going to get into problems. Okay. So, um, Dr. Governor, we are going to chat a bit about uh, post comrades uh, for those individuals that have ran. Obviously, there's certain care, certain rest, or how to treat certain injuries. So what I'd like for us to do is um, we're going to be um, coming back with our two guests and we can perhaps sit together and I'm sure um, our runner has a few questions okay. to ask you because right. he's been battling with pain and uh, what should what advice you could share with him uh, with regards to rest and post injury. Okay. So we'd be back shortly and we'd be introducing you to two amazing, very inspirational guests that one that has ran the comrades, I think close to 15 comrades and another individual that's just ran last week Sunday. So please stay tuned and we'll be chatting to them shortly. So in studio today, we have two out of three amazing uh, uh, participants that have participated in the Comrades. Our first guest in studio today would be Mr. Yusuf Vahid, who has accomplished 13 Comrades. What an accomplishment. Assalamu alaikum, Yusuf, and thank you so much for making the time out to us here at Modern and Modest on ITV. So Yusuf, it's been amazing. You've ran, what is it, close to 15, 13 Comrades, I would think. So, um, Yusuf, can you just tell us a little bit about how you got into it, what's inspired you, and yeah, just your journey to Comrades itself? Yeah, so, I've actually done, I thank you, Noshina, for inviting me. Uh, it's always a pleasure to try and inspire others. I have run 13, I've actually run 14 Comrades, but I've completed 13 Comrades. I started well back in 2001. I used to do social running, and I used to play other sports like squash and tennis and all of that and I decided I had a cousin of mine he's a dentist in this town okay. uh, Dr. Mohammed Vahed uh, he he said I should try it out and I I set the path and I have no regrets it's okay. been a it's, it's been a wonderful journey comrades is such a after watching it on uh, on TV on Sunday uh, I had this yearning to get back there I'm keeping my options open okay. because I'm still pretty fit and I have been running consistently. I have been riddled with injuries in the last two years. But also it's because of Ramadan, we haven't been able to run. Going forward, there could be a possibility. So I haven't ruled that out. Okay. Much against the wishes of my family. Okay. But it's, it's something that I, I would like to possibly look at again. All right, so Yusuf, you've uh, given us your story and your motivation as to how you started out with actually getting into the comrades. So for that um, lay person out there, someone that's never exercised but has this aspiration of one day accomplishing something like the Comrades Marathon, what advice would you share with that individual? I think th there's a few advices that I would like to give. I think before you want to do Comrades, I think you've got to get your, your mind right. Comrades is all about the power of the mind. If you are able to believe in yourself, and you say, I've got the willpower, then comrades is doable. However, there's a cautionary. So for me, a, a cautionary is, I would like younger people not to plunge into comrades, mm. but rather allow yourself to enjoy running first. Okay. And when you come to a level of maturity, then you say, I would like to do comrades. You will do comrades when you're young, but you won't appreciate the dynamic of comrades as much as when you are a little bit more seasoned. So, so as a basic thing, yeah. yeah. So as a basic thing, I think anybody who wants to get into sport mm -hmm. needs to understand that you need to first get out there. Yes. There's a big difference between a gym and mm. running. Mm. You can, people like to run on the treadmill, mm. but that's the most boring thing to do. The most enjoyable thing in Durban, especially, is you've got the beachfront. Yes. You've got a lovely, clean promenade. Mm. It's lovely, sunny. It's, it's, got, it's got all the track and everything else for you to start walking. And to get to become a runner, you must be able to walk. Right. And once you walk, you walk more. And once you walk more, you then become enthusiastic. You extend the time of your walking, mm -hmm. and then you start with saying, I would like to run a bit. Okay. Then you walk, run, you walk, run. And then you become more, less walking yes. and more running and become more confident. Okay. 
All right. Hi, Talani, and thank you so much for making it out to us today. I'm sure you in a lot of pain. Um, you've just ran the, the Comrades this Sunday, um, but I also know that you've ran more than one. Um, what was it? Close to seven Comrades that you've accomplished? Okay, so um, could you maybe tell us how did you actually begin? Where did your story start? Why Comrades and how did it start out with? Thank you, Nashida, and good morning to your viewers. I've been running, this was my seventh comrade. Like Yusuf was saying, I started in, I think in 2010 or 2009, when I saw that I was getting fat. And you know, in the police as well, you, you, you need to be fit. So I was getting fat, and it worried me. Okay. And I started walking around the block from where I stay, walk, jog, walk, jog, up until I met one guy. And he said to me, I like your body. Then I said to him, oh, but I'm fat. How can you? He said, I like your body. If I can get, he was so skinny. Right. He was running. And every morning, I used to see him running with a, a bag. And he was joking. And he told me he was going to Pine Town. Okay. He was jumping off from a train in Peria Station and then run in Yan Smart Highway to, to Pine Town. And he said to me, if I can get your body, I can, I can make it to the top 20 of Comrade. Then I started with the 10 kilometers, 21 kilometers. I started running on the road now. I, I will set myself some targets. Okay. I'll say, okay, I'm running Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or rest Thursday. Okay, so that was an amazing motivation for you. It started out with you just gaining a couple of kilos and you wanted to lose weight. And um, it led you to training. And, uh, and now, wow, you've accomplished seven comrades. So it's a fantastic message for our viewers out there that, um, you know, it's, it's something you can accomplish. Like uh, Mr. Bahid uh, mentioned, it's all about the power of your mind. So if you set your mind in accomplishing something, um, you can. Um, like for Tulani, you said it was weight, and with Yusuf, you, you were just encouraged by um, a colleague that asked you to perhaps start out with comrades, and alhamdulillah, you've accomplished 13, and Tulani started out with weight and accomplished 7. So tell me, Tulani, after race, how are you feeling? Is there pain? Have you experienced any injuries uh, post-race? After the race, you will feel the pains. Your muscles will be paining. You will have blisters, maybe your nails there and your toes will be out. Uh, but it's part of the game. It's part of the game. We have to enjoy it. Uh, when you sit, you find it difficult to, so to stand up. When you sleep in your bed, you, you wish you can sleep the whole day. Because the moment you try to stand up, it's paining. You can't even walk properly. So those are the recovery. Uh, uh, days for us, especially the first, the second, and the third day. And then if you, you are lucky like myself, you don't sustain any injuries during the, the whole marathon, so you are lucky. After five or six days, you are okay. You can carry on. But training, you can start training after three weeks uh, ma maximum. Sometimes your mind will be like not working properly because the strain that the Comrades Marathon takes from you, it drains you. That's why you must eat a lot. You must eat healthy stuff. You must make sure you also carbo load before the race and after the race, you must try and eat. I know in some, in most of our runners, they find it difficult to eat after the marathon. When you're running this race, how far down in the race can you actually feel that it's now starting to have an impact or it's starting to become a bit exhausting for you? Every race is different. As I said, uh, we have uh, the ultra marathon and the marathons. So, but especially with the comrade, for me personally, I start feeling it after halfway. So this one, I felt it in Pine Town. And that's when I decided, hey, must I quit? Must I not quit? The legs were heavy. Every step you take is paining. The muscles are heavy and are paining. So, but I carried on because you have that in your mind that I must finish. My family is waiting for me at the finish line. 
My friends are waiting for me. My colleagues are watching their TV televisions at home. So that's, when, that's how you keep going. But at the end of the day, you feel the pain. Okay, well, Yusuf, thank you so much for coming out. Uh, I think it was really inspiring, very motivational, especially for people in our community. They tend to feel a bit apprehensive or I would think more afraid that they're not able to accomplish something like the comrades. And Tulani, for you, uh, what an inspiration. I mean, to all those viewers that feel that they can't do something like the comrades because they perhaps feel a bit overweight, your journey to comrades started out with just trying to lose weight and wow, it's led you to completing seven comrades. Well, thank you so much for coming over and sharing your stories with us. And hopefully we are going to be motivating all our viewers and being an inspiration for them to perhaps one day run the comrades as well. Well, that was uh, Mr. Yusuf Bahid and Tulani that shared their journey towards the comrades. And yes, definitely, if you have an aspiration or a dream that you'd want to foresee, um, it's just, as Mr. Vahid mentioned, it's all about your state of mind, power of mind, and if you put your mind to something, you can most definitely achieve that goal. Well, thank you so much for watching yet another episode of Modern and Modest from myself and the ITV crew, same time next week. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.